Welcome to Therapists Uncensored, a podcast where therapists freely speak their minds about real life matters. Hi, welcome to Therapists Uncensored. I'm Patty Allwell. And I'm Sue Marriott. And I've been thinking about (laughs) (laughs) S-Town. I'm kind of obsessed. Like many of our listeners, I'm sure. (laughs) It is like one of the most downloaded podcasts as a amateur podcaster. I am also a consumer of podcasts. And I am fascinated by this podcast. And as an aside, I really want to host a discussion group or really get into it and talk about it. But for today's podcast, it made me think about at the very beginning of the episode, Brian Reed talks about he's interviewing this, uh, the whole story ends up being about John McLemore, who is a clockmaker. In the very intro, he talks about something that really jumped out at me. He was describing what clockmakers do, and he said that often there are witness marks. And that term is a super cool term when it comes to therapy, I believe. Mm-hmm. Witness marks as for a antique clock repairer are small impressions. Sometimes they're just a shadow, but sometimes... They are actual indentions of little gears or marks of something that used to be. And they're clues to what was in the clock. They can be. Sometimes they're nothing. But sometimes they're clues to what was in the clockmaker's mind, what was supposed to be, or what went wrong, even. Something broken. And the idea is that you use these witness marks to try to fix and repair the clock. Why I'm bringing this up is that these, I I began to think about witness marks when it comes to our body and what are our witness marks um, in our soma or our body related to our own biographies. Is that, is that just way out there? No, (laughs) no, I love this. This is a wonderful way. And it's sort of like looking for the little road map going backwards to what happened historically that caused today's event. Exactly. And the events that we're going to be talking about today are problematic events, as in poor health um, and all kinds of things. This is about the ACES study that is pretty popular in in much of the press. You may have heard about it or you may not have, but we're going to cover that. The background is it's a very... Sue, can I I say what ACES means? Please, yes. It's the Adverse Childhood Experience Survey. That's right. It's a massive, massive database where they have researched tens of thousands of people. And there are, we're going to link you to all kinds of resources on this. So this will be definitely one you're going to want to look in the show notes for. And we're going to give you some of the types of questions. There's only 10 questions on the short version of the test. Uh, So we're going to give you a real good idea of what that's about. But the idea behind this is that they've been able to link with just these few questions about one's biography. They can predict weird things like your chances of having a broken bone as an adult. Your chances of dying early. Yeah, like 20 years early. Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> That's a witness mark we want to pay attention to. Things like, you know, one could expect, okay, if I've had a rough childhood, yeah, I might be more likely to be an alcoholic or try drugs or something like that. That seems to intuitively make sense. But something like have COPD right, or have pulmonary lung disease, that seems kind of weird. And the outcomes change with a, over the lifespan. So for a teenager, it might be cognitive problems or acting out in school or getting in trouble with the police. But as you get further through the lifespan, they tend to be more physical and mental health issues. That's exactly right. So back in the early 80s, there was this guy. His name was Dr. Vincent Filetti. And he wasn't interested. He, none of this had happened yet. And he was actually studying obesity and severe obesity at that. And he had come up with a liquid diet. And he had learned through this lab how to get people to lose a ton of weight pretty quickly. So he was quite proud of himself and was moving along. But then he noticed that some people would gain the weight back even more quickly than they lost it. So he's scratching his head and he's trying to figure this out. And so he starts asking some follow-up questions like, what's going on? You know, And he stumbled upon somebody who mentioned that they had had childhood sexual abuse. So he didn't think much of it. And 
he stumbled upon another person who said they had childhood sexual abuse. And so just with the second one, he had this light bulb moment of, in my 23 years of practice, this was back then, he's been practicing much longer now. In my 23 years of practice, I've never known uh, an incest to, you know, like this is a lot of incest survivors in a short amount of time. I haven't been asking the right questions. So he was smart enough to realize they weren't just coming, you know, he, he just hadn't known them to be, he hadn't known what to ask. So he began to dig a little deeper and not just ask about incest history, sexual abuse history, but a wider array of questions. And he ended up linking up with someone from the Center for Disease Control, and they did a very wide study and were flabbergasted at the results. And this is where what has come of this is this ACEs study that, again, we're going to be telling you about. But And they've reduced it to only 10 questions, but this is not an exhaustive set of questions by any stretch of the kinds of trauma and abuse that people can have. But uh, it'll give you an idea of what we're what we mean. Right. And they are still following the original subjects through their lifespan to see how this changes over the years. That's right. So before we get into the specific questions, just to give you, you know, we've hinted a little bit at what some of these outcome measures are. The rough idea is that of these thousands and thousands and thousands of subjects, and these subjects aren't that it crosses all socioeconomics, it crosses all cultural, racial, nationalities. This is not related to lifestyle, anything like that. So, you know, they've controlled for all those kinds of variables. But basically, two thirds of people have at least one of these. And so it's not that big of a deal to have some sort of adversity in your childhood. That's not what predicts it. But if once you have one, 87% of people have more than one. And then once you start collecting a few, then we begin to get in a little bit more trouble. And that's when we begin to, the higher the number of your scale, the more likely, doesn't mean you that you're for sure going to be in trouble, but the more likely that you're going to begin to have some of these biological manifestations of stress and of potentially immune difficulties in adulthood and just kind of chronic stress issues. Right. And I want to stress that there are interventions and we'll get to them. So, you know, if you look at the ACEs and you have a high score. Are you getting depressed, Patty? <laughs> because of your high ACEs score? <laughs> right. If you look at your score and it's high, it doesn't mean that you are destined to have all of these adverse responses, but it means that you should be, you know, looking at treating your trauma. Yeah, that's exactly right. One of the hopeful messages of this is that people who have had like immune system issues and sort of some of these more weird diseases that are really hard to name and diagnose and you get kind of shoveled from one doctor to the next doctor and everyone's scratching their heads and not quite knowing what to do, that when you begin to tie it all the way back, when the doctors begin asking the right questions and as the patient begins to make links back into their history, their health improves. So that's why we want to publicize this. This isn't just, oh, wow, trauma creates these terrible effects throughout our lifespan. It's there really is something to do about it, both from a prevention standpoint and then also even if you are someone who is having health issues that could be related to some chronic stress that you've been in, the more that we put the, this narrative story together, the better treatment you're going to get and probably that your symptoms will improve as well. Right. And lots of school districts, social service agencies are taking this data and applying it to the populations they work with to find trauma sensitive treatments for to build the client's resistance. Resilience, excuse me, resilience. Yeah, resilience is a big. And you know, there's 18 states that actually have laws based on these ACEs study. There's 40 bills currently being considered. So it's it's the new thing. and It's very cool. So but the behavior, the outcome piece, these are the things that it's been associated with. And this is a funny one. It's been associated with lack of physical activity, which is actually one of the high risk things. It's as high risk as smoking and as the things that we are familiar with already. Um, smoking, of course, is one of them. Alcoholism, drug use, missed work. Those are all things that as you have more ACE, higher ACE score, you're more likely to have those elements. 
and that's predictive for adults, but younger kids, you'll see more cognitive impairment and you'll see hyperactivity, behavioral problems. So they're often diagnosed as having ADHD. That's right. And then the physical mental health side of things in adulthood, as your ACEs score goes up, that you have a higher chance of particularly suicide attempts, obesity, diabetes, depression, sexually transmitted diseases, COPD, I mentioned broken bones, stroke, cancer, heart disease. It's it's everything bad that you can think of. It's just once inflammation happens in your system, I mentioned the uh, immune disorders. And a lot of adrenal issues because that continuous production of stress hormones just really wears out your adrenals. So the questions themselves are really in three general categories. They are around abuse, neglect, uh, just some household concerns, and then concerns around family members. So some examples of those questions are things like if you have had a family member that has been incarcerated and it's just kind of a yes, no. If you've witnessed domestic violence. If someone in your household struggles with alcoholism. Mm-hmm, that's right. If you were humiliated, treated like emotionally abused by a parent. Um, and the way that this is, you know, that it's scaled. So the more of these that you have, the more likely that you have some of these chronic stress issues. And then, of course, with each one, the more it happens and the and the worse it is the more likely that you have that you that it could have affected your biology in these more severe ways right and there to name some of the other ones it's a separation or divorce of your parents and also if you were sexually abused by a person that was more than 5 years older than you yeah, and you know, there's some controversy about some of how the word some of these are written. Some of them are written like if you witnessed your mother being hit or hurt, and some people say, you know, any kind of domestic violence that you would see from either side is harmful and is traumatic. And then loss of a parent to death is not on the list, but that is an extreme stressor. And, you know, separation and divorce can happen and that can be not necessarily a traumatic thing. And if that is the case where it's not a traumatic thing, you probably won't have many of these other scores on there, but it is correlated with stress for the kids. Definitely get online with us if you'd like and take the test and sort of see what your score is. But it really is, as Sue was talking about these witness marks, they're indications that maybe these are areas that should get paid attention to. And that attention can be different depending on who you are and what your stage in life is. It could be, you know, talking over past traumas with a therapist. It could be taking yoga classes. You know, there's a lot of ways that trauma can be addressed. That's right, because the the injury, it, it has to do, you know, with, we've talked a lot on this podcast about executive function and regulation. And those are the areas that are affected by this high stress, these high stress environments. And over time, when there's that level of stress, it impairs the circuits around self-regulation. So that's why that these specific outcomes happen where, you know, you're going to have the extra, you're going to turn to nicotine, you're going to turn to alcohol, street drugs to regulate. These are regulation issues, obesity, eating, you know, if you notice kind of that a lot of that it's around regulation. And so you mentioning yoga, like working towards self-care, vagus nerve, a lot of what we've been talking about around repairing also your narrative that our biographies turn into our biology, you know, or, or, or there's a relationship at least, and that we want to use our biology and care for our biology that is already treating the trauma. That if we begin to treat our, not neglect ourselves, like stop neglecting ourselves. That's a great start. And the witness marks, I just love it so much because, you know, we have to look closely. We have to look carefully. We can try things on. Could it be this or could it be that? We're not in a court of law. We're not accusing anybody of anything. We're carefully putting pieces back together to repair something and to heal something. And it won't 
we can't undo anything, but we want to make it as best as we can. And that in and of itself is reparative for whatever that we've been through. And the other half of this is if you're a service provider, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a social worker, whether you're actually a, even police officers, they've done some of this trauma-sensitive training for police officers. And one of the things they've discovered is that people have suffered a lot of trauma. If you don't treat them and their space with respect, they get dysregulated. And so even just talking politely to people, even not getting too close to them or asking permission to enter their home and not really pushing forcefully and without permission into their space is a way to not stimulate the dysregulation from the trauma. That's right. And especially in the medical community, uh, there's a lot of chatter about this right now as a way of increasing um, and deepening healthcare and making it much more comprehensive and looking at the whole person. Exactly. And if you're a pediatrician treating a child, you also can be treating the parent because there's a lot of intergenerational transmission of trauma. And if you are asking these questions and being trauma sensitive with the child, you are by extension treating the entire family. Okay, so right now we want you to head on over to click on those links to take your own test and do it with love and care because it's pretty shocking. Right. <laughs> My number, I'm like really happy that I'm not in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> but it did make it did inspire me to like go for a run or something cuz I'm going to keep myself healthy as long as possible. <laughs> exactly. So I hope that you do it with the same spirit and thank you very much for listening. Go to our website, www.therapistuncensored.com. Give us your email. We'll put you on the email list. If you go to iTunes or to any provider of podcasts, you can rate us and review us and come back and see us soon. That's right. And we are, in particular, we're going to be getting ready to launch some classes so that we can go, you know, we always have a little bit of an issue about wanting to answer questions on the air, but we want to do it in a deeper way. So we're going to be doing some classes to be able to really go further. And so stay tuned for that. And we will see you around the bend. Therapist Uncensored is Ann Kelly, Patty Allwell, and Sue Marriott.